finally, we reach the seventh and last video in our Element Optics Hyper 7 video series. And today we're going to be wrapping it all up by running through how to most effectively and efficiently enter your wind and range data before taking a shot. In the previous few videos, we took some time to run through the processes of configuring the scope, creating profiles, choosing a reticle, and then zeroing the scope. So at this point, we're going to assume that you have the scope mounted to your rifle and ready to shoot. We're not gonna spend a lot of time discussing how to enter these parameters manually because it's actually really straightforward. And if you've seen the other videos, you'll kind of know how to do this already. All you do is you make sure that your input mode is on elevation, if you wanna set elevation, and then you dial in your elevation using the input dial up top here. Same thing with wind, you'll switch to wind mode using the uh, mode button, and then you'll dial in your wind left or right, and it's that simple, your firing solution will be displayed on the screen. But there's more to the Hyper 7 than that. Dialing things in manually does take up precious time. And one of the things that we've tried to do with the scope is to come up with ways to speed up that entire process. So the first thing we've done is a focus range mode. If you're using an air gun or a rimfire and you're gonna be shooting mostly at 100 yards or less, you can use the position of the parallax to estimate your range. In order to do this, you simply go into the menu by pressing the power button when your scope is on, you're gonna to go to focus range and you're gonna hit enable. This can be calibrated every 10 meters to give you the best possible accuracy, but keep in mind that the further you go, the less precise it'll become. For example, you might be able to easily tell the difference between 10 meters and 20 meters when parallax in the scope, but 90 to 100 meters, that's harder to pick up. And that's a problem because the further you go, the more precise your range needs to be in order to be given the best possible firing solution. That's where laser range finders come into play. It's the quickest and easiest way to get an extremely precise range at any distance. And there are plenty of generic handheld range finders on the market that will give you a range and you can simply dial in the range with your input dials. But there is another way. Now, quick disclaimer, this is still a prototype. So what you're seeing here will change slightly um, for the production version. But this is our new Element Optics uh, range finding module. And this was developed to work with the Hyper 7 and other scopes, but mostly for the Hyper 7 to streamline the whole process even further. The module sits inside a 30 millimeter tube, which makes it easy to mount to the accessory rail on the Hyper 7 or the accessory rail on any rifle. And when mounted firmly in place, it will not move at all. The range finding unit has an effective range of 1200 yards, can be charged with a USB-C cable, has its own ballistics calculator with the same programming as the Hyper 7 and has a display. This means that theoretically this can be put on any rifle and as long as your ballistics profile is correct for that rifle, this will give you very precise firing solutions in MIL or MOA. When connected to the Hyper 7, it sends the range to the scope and lets the Hyper 7 take weather conditions into account before correcting for your shot like it normally would. This means that you can aim, range and engage a target in less than a second without having to do any work other than pressing the range button and then pulling the trigger. When fitting the range finding module to your rifle or scope, you're going to want to pick a position to fit it on. Now I'm going to be fitting it on the scope for this demonstration and I've chosen the default 45 degree position here, basically because it doesn't get in the way of any of the knobs or buttons. It's quite simple. You'll put it in place, you'll tighten it down, and once this is torqued down, it should be relatively well aligned with your scope. Next, you're gonna to want to mount the pressure switch somewhere on your rifle. You don't need the pressure switch to operate this. It does have a button on the unit itself, but it's much easier using your thumb on, on a rifle stock to obtain your range than to lift your hand and put it up here. USB-C cable plugs right in the back and your pressure switch can be mounted anywhere on your stock. The last and most difficult step is to actually align 
the laser beam with the position in your field of view that you want it to show up on. Now obviously a normal range finding laser beam is not visible to the human eye. So what we've done is we've designed a visible laser that is perfectly aligned with the range finding laser beam that you can switch on and off to facilitate this process. There is an elevation turret and there's a windage turret. You'll move these up, down, left or right, very similar to the way you'd adjust a traditional scope and this will shift the laser beam. You can move it wherever you want. A few tips on how to do this most effectively. Tip number one, you're gonna to want to do this in low light conditions. You could actually pretty much do it in the dark. You want to see that laser beam very clearly even out at 50 to 100 meters plus. And the only way to do that is if it's really dark. Secondly, you're going to want to choose very carefully where you want the beam to sit. One option is to measure the offset between the rangefinder and the center of the scope. In this case, 55 millimeters and make a mark on your target an equal distance away from the bullseye and in the same position. This essentially makes your line of sight and the laser line perfectly parallel. So all you'd need to do, whether you're 10 yards, 100 yards or 1000 yards away, is to hold that same 55 millimeters off center to obtain a solid range reading. There is one more way though. We've placed an aim point in the display which switches on when a rangefinder is connected and you can set the rangefinder beam to sit within this aim point. If you want to use this method, you're going to want to ensure that you're a good distance away, at least 50 to 100 yards, because the beam and your actual aim point may not be perfectly parallel. So you want to minimize the error that compounds at really long range and at really close range by making sure that you're a good distance away when you set this. Once your beam is set, you can press the mode button again to switch off the visible laser and you're good to go. And yes, I hear you asking about handheld rangefinders with similar technology to this. Don't worry, there is stuff in the pipeline. That's all I can say. But our goal is to build an ecosystem and really push this technology forward. Right, well, we're gonna do a bit of a demonstration over here. We've got the Hyper 7 uh, with a camera mounted behind it. And we've put some steel targets all the way out to about 100 and, I'm guessing around 150 meters, 160 meters. We're shooting with an air rifle and the idea here is just to show you that even with a air rifle slug which is dropping quite a lot at those distances the Hyper 7 can calculate for it quickly. So we've got the rangefinder mounted, we've just done a quick zero at 50 yards. It's very difficult to see through this camera display but we're going to do our best. So unknown distances, one, two, three, four, five uh, steel targets out there. Let's see what we can do, shall we? I'm going to hit record here. Okay, here we go. Focus. Range. Shoot. Focus. Range. Shoot. Focus. Range. Shoot. This one's pretty much already in focus, so we're just going to range. Boom. 171 yards. Shoot. Another one there. Looks like those branches might be in the way, but we're going to give it a try. <laughs> and there you go. All the way out to 170 yards with an air gun. Quick and easy. Okay, we're going to take this camera off because it sucks looking through a camera when you're shooting. And we're going to show you how fast we can do that same sequence. Let's might as well just go all the way there and all the way back without having to perfectly fine tune the parallax. Um, so basically just range and shoot. Let's see.
And that brings us to the end of the Harper 7 video series. We hope that it answered some questions and helped you to get a better picture of what the scope is all about. As always, thank you very much for watching. You can subscribe to Element Optics on YouTube to see more videos like this, or to see hunting videos or anything in between. You can also follow us on social media or visit our website at www.element-optics.com. We'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.